Welcome to the Ultimate Tortilla Delivery Invoicing Evaluation Webinar. My name is Georgia Brown. I'll be your moderator for today. And our main speaker and subject matter expert is Daryl Wilson. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us. Quickly, I will talk about who is Extend Data. Then Daryl will discuss the five-point delivery invoicing evaluation. I'll, I'll discuss the cost centers and savings potential. Daryl will discuss the bonus efficiency opportunities. And then we'll go into a question and answer period. So who is Extend Data? Since 2002, Extend Data has helped over 1,500 companies with their mobility and supply chain solutions. We have five areas of expertise. Those are wireless integration, identification and tracking solutions, professional services, mobile computing, and software development. We have experience with tortilla manufacturer and distributor customers, and here's a small sampling of those customers. You may recognize a few of them. When working with our tortilla customers, Extendata's expertise lies within delivery operations by creating manpower and back office efficiencies decreasing delivery and administrative costs, and improving visibility into and through delivery operations. So now that I've told you a little bit about Extend Data, Daryl, why don't you go ahead and take us straight into the five-point delivery evaluation? Your delivery route drivers use paper-based forms to manually complete customer orders and invoices. If the answer to that question is yes, then these are some of the uh, challenges that you may face on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, hard to read handwriting. Anytime paper-based order forms are used, um, handwriting can always be a factor. Uh, trying to determine uh, what quantity or value was written down um, can obviously uh, create delays and challenges. Pricing calculation errors um, as drivers finish up the form and then get out their calculator to work through uh, the calculations on that, there's always a chance for, uh, you know, miskey on a calculator and a calculation being wrong on that uh, form. Product quantity miscounts. This can occur when the driver writes down, here's, you know, the quantities of what I'm delivering, here's what's being returned, and then potentially a change in that something gets pulled from the shelf or uh, put on the shelf, but it doesn't get recorded on the sheet. And then lack of back office visibility, this really comes into play where because everything is paper-based, uh, you clearly have no idea what's happened out in the field until your driver's done for the day and brings back um, those paper forms. So resulting cost areas uh, around handwritten forms, clearly the, the paper supplies themselves, the cost of uh, those printed forms, as most many of them are multi-part forms. Uh, and then just the time it takes to uh, do the handwritten uh, calculations and, and, and that process. So our next point is order form errors. And if you're handwriting forms, there's always a chance that uh, somebody's going to make some sort of mistake, whether that's the driver writing down something or calculating something wrong or um, someone else having a challenge reading those uh, forms. And, and if you're dealing with uh, order form errors. Here are a few of the challenges that you deal with uh, working through that. The first being misdelivered product. Uh, in the event that uh, quantities written on the form are different than what was actually delivered, uh, then obviously there's going to be an issue there. The quantities and um, totals on that uh, paper form are going to be incorrect. And then that may result in the next point here, returning to the customer to correct that error. So if the customer you know, calls up customer service and says, hey, I didn't get what I expected to get or whatever, uh, if the driver's got to go back to the customer to correct that, well, obviously that's going to burn some time. Multiple conversations to understand what's on the order form uh, in the event that the back office staff is you know, trying to interpret what was written down on a form and they contact the route manager and the route manager gets driver on the line and you've got this process of trying to confirm what actually took place um, during that delivery and, and sales process. Uh, that obviously is going to take up time as well. 
And then the back office data entry dealing with order form errors, you know, it, it's frustrating, it's time consuming, um, it creates potential for other potential errors. So multiple scenarios around the cost series for order form errors, on-site delivery times, back office time, um, dispatcher route manager uh, time, a lot of time can be wasted based on errors. So manual data entry is our next topic. And the question is, do your back office staff manually key in invoices and orders into your systems? And of course, if you are functioning in a paper-based environment, uh, then there's really no other option. So some of the issues that go along with manual data entry, uh, the, it, first is really just the time uh, it takes to get to that paperwork available. Obviously, as a driver's out during the day, um, that paperwork is not available to the back office staff until the end of the day or potentially the next morning. And that would be at the soonest point. So if there's any other processes that may delay that, then you potentially have a day or two between the time when product was sold and delivered and when uh, the back office staff is able to start putting that into the systems. Time consuming process, all manual data entry tends to be a time consuming process, uh, even though there are you know, many folks that because they do it day in and day out, they get pretty good, but uh, that can also create other scenarios where because people are moving or trying to move quickly, uh, it can open up the errors or the potential for errors with fat fingering a quantity or some other value. Dealing with incorrect data from the drivers, as we mentioned before, any sort of errors on the on the forms, you know, delay this process um, and make it more complicated. If there's any sort of uh, you know corrections that need to occur you know, again, getting the driver on the phone to confirm and make corrections to the orders in the back office system that creates uh, delays in, in the process. And then just purely because it's manual data entry, um, it, it can create delays in the process of reporting on your sales activity and how things are actually uh, going out in the field. Um, that also can create inaccuracies in some of that reporting as well. End of day settlement is our next topic, and depending upon uh, the types of customers that you may have, um, performing an end of day settlement uh, can be pretty critical because you're collecting a lot of cash and checks. So the question is, do your drivers perform a paper-based end of day settlement? And if they do, some of the challenges that go along with that are you know, really just starting out with the amount of time it takes and the potential for uh, handwritten errors on those forms. Um, as drivers are you know, going through and filling out a, an end-of-day settlement form, trying to capture the payments that were collected and other data throughout, you know, about what occurred throughout the day, um, there's always the potential for errors in that process as well as, again, some of the challenges around, you know, handwriting uh, reports and trying to read uh, handwriting. A, a manual or paper-based end-of-day settlement process really does open up the potential for uh, theft by drivers uh, when there's a, a lack of um, process and accountability around confirming payments that have been received versus product that was delivered. Um, Sometimes drivers get a little bit creative there. Lack of sales accountability. Again, you know, consistency between one um, end-of-day settlement report and another um, can really, you know, create some challenges around understanding sales performance and holding drivers accountable to that. And then, uh, you know, in many cases, if uh, that end-of-day settlement process is weak or maybe doesn't even exist, um, there's all of these challenges that we talked about are, are just that much more compound. The resulting cost areas around end-of-day settlement, you know, really come into play with driver paperwork. Uh, one, the forms that could be filled out as well as the time it takes to go through that process and then the back office staff side of that trying to review and confirm what uh, was reported and match that up with the, uh, the invoices and orders that were created that day. Day sales outstanding is our last topic. 
and really day sales outstanding is a, applies um, significantly to uh, those of you out there that have customers on net terms make a delivery and then the customer has net seven or net 15 days uh, to pay on those invoices um, if your DSO is over 30 to 45 days um, then obviously that that can be a challenge because it's just taking you that much longer to actually receive um, payment for the services and the products that you've uh, delivered. So some of the challenges and uh, scenarios that go along with day sales outstanding. The first is you know, how many days does it take to get the paper order forms entered into the system? And as we've mentioned, if uh, those get turned in one day and maybe it takes a day or two before the back office staff is getting those keyed in, those are just days added directly onto your DSO. Next point of days to correct any orders or invoice errors. So again, if it takes a couple days to get to that process and then as the back office staff is going through the process of reviewing and getting that those data or those orders entered, then if there's any errors, it may take you know days or hopefully only hours to get some of that corrected. But again, that's more time added onto the DSO. Uh, your payment terms, obviously the longer the payment terms, uh, the longer it generally takes to get paid. If you have a net 15 term, most of our, uh, most all of, all of our customers, including ours, and if they uh, have that much time to pay, they'll wait until the end of that time. So again, that's just a part of the process. Uh, the timeline uh, increased due to the customer disputes. Really, if, if your customers receive an invoice, they don't believe that it matches up with what uh, they received or the paper form, then they're going to be on the phone with customer service, and that's going to create a whole new process, which may generate a new invoice, which in some times will start the clock again, and you've almost doubled um, the time it takes to get paid on that particular transaction. Ultimately, the question is how many total days does it take you to get paid, um, and what can you do to shorten that? Most of the resulting cost areas are around your back office staff working through and dealing with this process, but ultimately cash flow is a huge factor in this as well. This is one of the specific areas where an electronic DSD or route accounting solution can make a big difference in DSO, primarily because when that driver completes that transaction, uh, he's going to be leaving a clean, uh, perfect invoice with the customer that basically can start your terms at that point in time. So that concludes our five delivery evaluation points. And now we'll talk a little bit about uh, costs and return on investment. Thanks, Daryl. So folks, while Daryl has been going through these different evaluation points for um, paper-based order and then invoicing, you know, in the lower right corner, he was calling out the cost areas. So what we've done is, based on our experience, we've collected all the information that we have and grouped the costs into these five centers driver paperwork, on-site delivery, paper-based supplies, and back office data entry, and then final, finally driver and or warehouse. So based on a company with five truck, or excuse me, eight truck out routes, this is what we believe uh, those expenses could potentially be on an annual basis. It may change depending on your organization, if you have more trucks or if you have a half paper-based process, half electronic, there's a many, there are many scenarios. But to create a baseline, this is what we believe that expense is currently. Now, because I've called out these paper-based challenges, you're thinking, well, how do I, you know, how do I improve that? What tactics can I do to improve that my paper-based forms are more accurate? Uh, we could give you a ton of information around how to make sure that those processes are more accurate and how you can create checks and balances within your system. But that's just going to add more layers of process. And if there's one thing that people really don't like, is complicated and time-consuming processes. So we would rather just get straight to the point. We believe that by switching to an electronic order and invoicing system, 
that you can achieve these kinds of cost savings within your orders and invoicing. All five areas. Now, if you're better at math than I am, you've probably already calculated out that that's 50% savings. And you might think that that's ridiculous, that that line, you have no idea what you're talking about. But truly, we've been able to estimate that when a company is committed to the process of switching between paper-based to electronic DSC, direct store delivery, that these are the actual types of savings that they can achieve. Now, and that's just when we're talking about the paper-based orders and invoicing. So, Daryl, why don't you tell them about the bonus efficiencies that come along when you switch to this kind of electronic system? Yeah, will do. So there's multiple scenarios that uh, can create, you know, if, ex additional efficiency in your process and in your organization by moving to an electronic DSD solution. But these are just a few that we wanted to point out. Um, the first one, inventory tracking. Our application, Mobile Conductor, provides the ability for uh, inventory to be tracked from through a carryover process where potentially there's inventory remaining from the previous day, um, through receiving a load request that maybe the driver put out to um, replenish the stock on his vehicle, and then as product is delivered throughout the day or returned for various reasons, the inventory is updated throughout that process. And that provides the ability to do a, an end-of-day in inventory reconciliation or count to confirm what's actually come back on the truck. And that creates a lot of um, efficiency from the perspective of really knowing what, is, what inventory exists um, and where it is. Reducing delivery shrink comes into play where, again, when you have a good inventory level on the vehicle and you're tracking data points like uh, here's what's on hand in the stores that you're delivering to, here's the, what the quantities that we're actually delivering or adding to into the store, and here are quantities coming out of the store for whatever purposes on a return or credit. Um, all of that data combined together gives you good, accurate information about what, truly what your customers are buying, which then reduces uh, delivery shrink because hopefully you're, re you're reducing returns um, and you've got better inventory accountability. Real-time route performance visibility, you know, in the event of using a, an electronic DSD solution on a device that has a wide area, you know, carrier network um, capable data plan, then what you're able to do is send those transactions that drivers are completing uh, back to a back office uh, web portal so that you have almost immediate visibility to what just took place, what products were sold, um, if there was any returns, what could have been the issues with those, and so on. Um, because you have this data being sent up to the web portal so quickly, it gives you a lot of visibility into um, what's happening with your customers and how your routes are performing. And again, because that data is so timely, uh, reporting becomes way more accurate and way more timely because you have access to the data that much quicker. Now, our last point comes around dealing with any sort of special pricing. So if you have customers where you know a certain chain of, of stores may get a certain price um, or you need to do uh, price breaks based on quantity or other discount scenarios, that can be very challenging in a paper-based environment. But an electronic DSD solution can really provide a lot of options around uh, providing special pricing to your customers, which ultimately increases customer service. Mobile Conductor is our direct store delivery application that we have helped other Tortilla organizations, uh, manufacturers, and distributors to create efficiencies. Uh, Mobile Conductor has been awarded for five years in a row from Food Logistics Magazine as a top technology and uh, solution provider. Real quickly, our sponsor is Honeywell. Without them, uh, this webinar would not have been possible today. Uh, we are a gold level performance partner with them, and their mobile computing devices is where Mobile Conductor lives. So your drivers would walk around with this handheld mobile computing device. Um, it's like a smartphone, but a lot tougher. 
Uh, I know we do have a, a particular question around um, operating systems that we'll get to uh, first. Um, but before we do that, take a look at the handout in GoToWebinar. We have a link inside that handout that goes to a review of the CT, Dolphin CT50. We gave it an A as being excellent for direct store delivery and route accounting uh, operations. Thank you for your time today. I know that we went a little bit over, but I appreciate your patience. And we hope that you have a great day. Thank you.